Hello, and thank you for joining us at the team at Science Interactive today for our webinar introducing the all new Science Interactive AMP. We are excited to take our attendees on a comprehensive tour of our award winning e learning platform, Cloud. Before I hand the mic over to our host, let's take a moment to review the webinar logistics and give a brief overview of what to expect today. First things first, who or what is Science Interactive? We are thrilled to announce that Science Interactive is the union of eScience Labs and Hands-On Labs, the trusted leaders in online science education. Together, we partner with over 800 institutions nationwide, providing hundreds of sophisticated science experiments and lessons across nine disciplines. Our complete lab solution combines customizable kits, rigorous digital curriculum, and cutting edge technology to bring the lab to students, regardless of distance or circumstance. We bridge the distance learning gap by empowering students, instructors, and institutions to to stay competitive in the ever-evolving higher education landscape. We're still the companies you know and love, just with a new name and logo. Over the coming weeks, you will be receiving updates about our new brand via email and social media. We invite you to come on this journey with us as we continue our work to provide the very best in online science education so that you can focus on what matters most, teaching the scientists of tomorrow. For today's webinar, we encourage our attendees to participate in the conversation by asking questions and sharing resources. Please use the chat function to join the conversation. If you'd like the entire group to see your comment or question, be sure to toggle the window to all panelists and attendees. If you have any questions for our host today, please type them in the Q&A box. You can find this section in your toolbar. We have several distant learning specialists on the panel today to help answer any questions you have in real time. For questions pertaining to kit cost and customization, please work directly with your dedicated distance learning specialist once the webinar concludes. We will try to answer your questions in real time. However, Dr. Duane and Dr. Hannah will address any remaining questions in detail at the conclusion of their presentation. At any point in the conversation, you can raise your virtual hand and our distant learning specialist will send you a private chat message to support your needs. Everyone here today will receive a follow-up email by the end of the day that will include a recording of the webinar and additional resources for you to reference moving forward. We will also be announcing the winner of the $100 Amazon gift card. So keep an eye out for that email as it could be you. So what can you expect to see today? During our demo, Dr. Dwayne Cagle and Dr. Hannah Rosen will take you on a deep dive into the award-winning cloud platform and give you an exclusive look at our all-new AP course from Science Interactive. Everyone here today is the first to get an exclusive sneak peek at the new content under the new brand. Before the fun begins, I'd like to introduce our host today, Dr. Dwayne Cagle and Dr. Hannah Rosen. Dr. Duane is our Chief Resident Scientist and has been the brains behind the Science Interactive Curriculum development for the past nine years. When he's not in the lab testing experimental hypothesis, you can find Dr. D on the slopes, shredding some snow, or practicing his serve on the tennis courts. Dr. Hannah is a life science subject matter expert who generates course curricula for Science Interactive. She has over three years of experience writing hands-on and digital science labs for biology, anatomy and physiology, microbiology, forensics, and pharmacy technician courses. Dr. Rosen holds a PhD in biology from Stanford University. Without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our host, Dr. Duane Cagle and Dr. Hannah Rosen. Thank you for the introduction and thanks to everybody for joining. I'm Dr. Hannah Rosen. I'm going to start things off by giving you guys a little tutorial of the new Science Interactive Anatomy and Physiology course. 
Um, as we mentioned in the introduction, the science interactive courses have basically combined the best qualities from the hands-on labs and e-science labs curricula, as well as adding in some really new and exciting stuff that would be unique for both brands. Uh, so let's just jump in. Um, this is the cloud platform. When students open a lesson in the cloud platform, whether they're accessing it directly through cloud or if it's embedded into your LMS platform, they will start on the um, exploration menu page for that lesson. On this menu page, students will get a breakdown of the estimated completion times for each section of the lesson, as well as the learning objectives for the exploration content. Once they've reviewed all of this, they will then enter into the pretest of test your knowledge questions. These questions basically introduce the students to some of the key concepts that are gonna be uh, discussed in the exploration content. And students will go through and these types of questions range from rearranging uh, different things into a specific order, categorizing different elements, or they might also be uh, labeling images or uh, various other different types of drag and drops. And this kind of gives students an idea of what sort of uh, ideas they should be looking out for when they're going through the exploration content. And then at the end of the exploration content, the students will repeat these questions to make sure that they have really absorbed all of these important uh, facts and information. Once they have completed the test your knowledge questions, they will then enter into the exploration content. The exploration content will provide the students with all of the information that they need in order to successfully complete the exercises in the experimentation section. The exploration content will contain text, images, videos, and ADA compliant interactive elements. Any terms that students really need to be able to identify will be bolded and defined within the text. And any interactive elements will be called out in the text. And for example, an image such as this, the students may be able to click on all of the different labeled elements to get a brief description of what those different elements are. And these interactive elements will just help to increase student engagement so that they're not just staring at big blocks of text and reading. The students actually have to interact with the different information in order for, to be provided with it. And that just really helps improve their ability to engage with the material and absorb the information better. And like I said before, all of these interactive elements, as well as everything else in the cloud is ADA compliant and um, screen reader accessible. For some of the exploration pages, once students have read through all of the information, they will get to a question time question. And this will test the students on information that was presented on that specific page. The students will answer it and then they will receive feedback about whether or not they answered the question correctly and then they will move on. Uh, in the student view, these will be gated questions, uh, same with the test your knowledge questions. Um, but since I'm giving its uh, demo in the instructor view, uh, I'm just gonna move past those. Some of the pages will also have little fun did you know facts, which will help contextualize any of the information that's presented in the exploration section into sort of a real world scenario. So just kind of again, providing students with more reasons why this information is important and how it applies uh, to the real world. Again, some of these pages will provide images that just help contextualize some of the information that the students are reading. And then once students have completed all of the pages in the exploration section, they will then move on to the experimentation section. The first page of the experimentation section, very similar to the exploration section, is basically an overview of the experimentation section with an estimated completion time at the top and the learning objectives 
for the experimentation section. Students will then progress onto the materials page, which provides them with the list of all the materials they will need to complete the exercises in the experimentation section. And these are broken out into our supplied items and then the items that students will need to provide themselves. So this way students can go through and get an idea of what things they may need to go out and buy that didn't necessarily weren't included in the kits and also what they need to pull out of the kit that we sent them in order to successfully complete these exercises. Students will then move on to the first exercise, which for this lesson, this is the senses lesson, as you may have gathered. And so it covers all the different sensory systems in the human body. And so this first uh, lesson or exercise, excuse me, is a cow eye dissection. And so within the different exercises, we will have embedded different elements to help the students to successfully complete the exercises. So in some cases, we'll have experiment demo videos. Welcome to the cow eye dissection experiment with the nervous system lab. In this experiment, you will dissect the cow eye to better understand how the eye forms images and communicates with the brain. Here are a few tips to help you perform the dissection. To begin, put on your safety equipment, lay down your under pad, and place your dissection tray on top of it. Gently open the bag containing your cow eye and place it on the dissection tray. To begin the dissection, carefully remove any fat or extrinsic muscle with a scalpel. This will make the sclera and optic nerve more visible. So basically these videos will help for any directions that might be difficult to convey just through text or within images to just help make sure that students are really grasping what they need to do. And as you saw in that video, all of them are provided with closed captioning to help with that ADA accessibility. We also will provide separate links to any PDF documents that the students might need to kind of help with their successful completion of the exercises. And as students work through, they will be provided with various figures to also help with successful completion of the different exercises. And these figures will appear anytime that there's a particularly, a step that's particularly difficult to explain with words alone. Uh, we'll give them the images, and especially with these dissections, we like to provide them with images of the different structures that we're asking the students to identify because you know, they won't have a TA or an instructor in the classroom there to help them if they get stuck. So we wanna provide them with as much aid as possible for them to successfully complete the exercises. As the students are going through, they will be asked to take photos of their results and potentially label them and also to record any data in the data tables. And all of these photos and data tables and panels be accessed in the data tab, which you see at the bottom of the screen when students select that. It opens up the data tab and all of the different data panels and collection areas are provided for this ex experiment, excuse me, down here in the data table. And students can toggle back and forth between the data tab and the protocols as they need. And these will all auto save as the students are working on them. So if a student is working through and they may have an unstable internet connection and they lose their internet connectivity, all of their input will be auto-saved so they don't have to worry about needing to start all over from the beginning if they should happen to lose their internet connection or something comes up and they need to step away for a moment. It'll all be auto-saved. We then provide students with any cleanup instruction for the exercises. And then once they have worked through all of the protocol steps, they'll then finish up with some exercise questions, which students will then type in the uh, short answers into the answer box. And this will all pertain to the, the uh, steps of the protocol that the students have completed. And just like with the data tables, the data tab, um, these all auto save. So again, students don't have to worry about losing their work if they have an unstable internet connection. 
Now, one of the considerations with anatomy and physiology and one of the concerns that a lot of uh, instructors have for teaching online courses and online labs is either the safety aspect of a dissection at home or the cost that's associated with the dissections. Uh, and while we've taken all our steps to make these experiments as safe to be performed at home and as cost effective as possible, if for some reason you just really don't want to include the physical dissection specimen in your kit, but you still really want students to get that experience, we also have an alternative to these physical experiments that I will now show you. We at Science Interactive have teamed up with BioDigital to provide a uh, online virtual option instead of these physical dissections. So anytime that there is a dissection in the anatomy and physiology course, we also provide the biodigital alternative. And so what students will do if they are doing the biodigital dissections is they will then be presented with an external link that will open the biodigital model. So when students open that link, it opens the biodigital model in a separate tab so that students can toggle back and forth between our protocols and the model. And students will then be able to be walked through the dissection that they will perform on the biodigital model. The biodigital model is great because it can be manipulated in so many different ways. The students can click and drag to rotate the model. They can also pan the model so they can see different areas of it. They can zoom in and out. And the coolest feature here is that the students actually really do get to dissect it because if they switch to the hide feature, they can select different structures and remove them. So they can then do this step-by-step -step dissection and see all of the structures as they are presented in the real uh, organ or system, whatever it is they're dissecting. When students click on the different structures in the model, they'll get the name and they can select the read more tab to get a little bit of a description of what that structure is and the function that it provides. If students are being asked to identify a specific structure and they're really not sure where it is, they can use the search feature and then they just type in whatever structure it is that they're trying to find. It'll appear in the search bar and then they select it and the, uh, the model will then zoom in and highlight that feature. So this is really a great alternative if you, know, you don't feel comfortable providing the hands-on dissections for whatever reason. The students can then go through, they'll take screenshots of the model and they'll label them really just like they would with the cow eye dissection. So it's just a little bit of variety that you can provide, you know, depending on what your needs are for your course and for your students. Everything else about these lessons is the same. So I'll just continue on in the biodigital version to the remaining experiments that we can walk through. So some of the exercises, uh, you know, they, they have varying amounts of materials, various amounts of hands-on uh, activity. Some of them are more hands-on than others. Uh, some of them have multiple parts that they're broken down into. You can see here us providing an image so that students really understand what they're being asked to do as they walk through these different experiments. You can see examples of the different types of data collection that we ask the students to perform. And there's different numbers of exercises for each lesson, depending on the lesson. Some of them, you know, this one is a particularly heavy ex, uh, lesson. It has four different exercises. Some of them will only have one exercise. Some will have two, some will have three. It really depends on uh, how complex that particular topic is. Uh, four tends to be the max and there aren't very many that have four. Um, usually uh, lessons that have a dissection will be one of the higher numbers uh, um, of ex exercises within the lesson just because that uh, dissection adds to kind of tax an extra exercise on there.
And then once students have successfully completed all of their exercises, they will then move on to our evaluation section. Now in the evaluation section, they will first arrive to the, uh, the uh, menu page where they will then see the time breakdown and then also all of the learning objectives that they cover throughout the entire lesson. So this includes both the exploration content learning objectives and the experimentation learning objectives. When students then select continue evaluation, uh, they will enter into the competency review. I want it to be noted that when the students are completing the competency review, they will be locked out of all other browsers and pages. So they won't be able to open another browser and Google the response or exit out of this and then go back and look up an answer in the exploration page if they forgot it. It's a true quiz of the student's knowledge that they've taken in over the course of performing this lesson. And they'll be quizzed on every learning objective from stuff from both the exploration section and from the experimentation section. These will all be multiple choice, true or false questions. Students will go through and we have a timer up here, but we don't cut them off at a specific time. This isn't like a time thing. It's just a, a timer up there so the students can see how they're progressing. When students are finished with the exam, they can go back if they think, oh, you know what, I actually think that I answered question five wrong. Let me go back and change that. But once they hit finish, their, uh, question, their answers will be locked in. So we give them a little warning to let them know that once they hit finish, they can't go back and change their answers. Then the students will be given their results. They'll be told you know, which ones they got right, which ones they get wrong, and they'll be given feedback along with those answers. So if they got one wrong, they'll be told which learning objective it was associated with and which page in the exploration content or which exercise they should go back and review to make sure that they really understand that topic. Now, once students have completed the um, competency review, they'll then move on to the final uh, assessment, which is the extension questions. And these extension questions are short answer. They require the students to sort of apply the knowledge that they have uh, absorbed throughout this lesson to a broader context. So up until the extension questions, all of the assessments are pretty much restricted to what the students have been told or what they directly observed in the exercises. But these extension questions, we just ask the students to kind of take what they've learned and apply it in a broader context. And then once they finish that, they will be finished with their examination and they will have finished the lesson and they'll be ready to move on to the next one. Now real quick, before I turn this over to Dr. Dwayne, I wanna show you guys one other lesson because I wanna show you that not only in addition to these hands-on experiments do we have, but we also have some virtual exercises as well for the students. So I'm just gonna jump straight in to the exercise section for physiology of the respiratory system. Now, the reason why we have some of these virtual experiments is because there are just some things that students can't do at home, either for safety reasons or expense reasons, because they might require equipment that is just not feasible for us to send to the student for one reason or another but they're still really important experiments that we want the students to complete in order to successfully understand all of these topics. And so when that's the case, we provide a virtual option for the students. So you'll see in this lesson, the first exercise is a hands-on lesson where students are modeling the pleural cavity in the respiratory system. And they perform these just like they would any of the hands-on experiments that you saw in the first uh, lesson that I demoed for you. But then in the second exercise, this is a virtual spirometry experiment. So it would not make sense for us to send spirometers to all of the students uh, that we uh, have buying our kits. So instead we have the students perform this virtual exercise. And these exercises are typically embedded directly into the procedures. Although as you saw in the case with the biodigital exercises, we do have to link out to an external source for that one. But for a lot of these, the students will just be performing it within the protocol itself. And they will be guided exactly what they need to do to successfully perform the experiments.
for you to see. For this one, they get just kind of a tutorial as to how the spirometry works. And they get an introduction to what that data output looks like and how to interpret it. So they can select each graph and get information as to how the interpretation for this data may vary depending on whether or not the uh, patient is healthy or has a respiratory disorder. Then the students will go on to test various different patients. They'll get a brief medical history and then they will perform the spirometry as they would if they were in a, a real medical setting. And the students are then presented with the data and then as would be done uh, when they're performing spirometry in a real setting, the patient will perform an exercise. And then they will repeat the procedure. The students will then view the data summary and then they'll get a comparison of the different data and all of the values that they need then to answer the exercise questions and to fill in the data tables. And so students can then work through these going back and forth between the data tables and collecting the data just as they would if this were a regular hands-on exercise. And that about wraps up my portion of this presentation. Now I'm going to hand things over to Dr. Duane, who's going to give you a tutorial of some of the more in-depth features of the cloud. Excellent. Thank you so much, Hannah, uh, for sharing our very engaging and exciting uh, anatomy and physiology curriculum. Uh, with our audience. Uh, before I get started, and, and by the way, what I'm going to be sharing with everyone today uh, is tools we have built for the instructors uh, who teach courses using our curriculum. Uh, and before we get on to that topic, I'd like to pause for just a moment uh, to make sure there aren't any outstanding questions that our panelists were unable to answer uh, regarding anything that Hannah may have just demonstrated to you. Uh, so I would encourage the panelists to speak up if there are any questions they would like Hannah to address. And uh, in the meantime, I'll be queuing up my screen to go over instructor tools. Uh, yes, Dwayne, we did have a couple of questions. Um, one from Kathy we had earlier, I think it's important to address, it was a great question she had about the introductory content. Um, she was asking if students must complete that um, in order to move on to experimentation. And yes, um, students must complete all of the introductory content and quizzes before moving on to um, the experimentation portion. And we had another question, let's see here, about what is included in histology and virtual microscopy. Oh, excellent question. Yes, I did not get a chance to cover the histology section. So for all of the, I, I focus, tend to focus a little bit more on the physiology lessons I'm realizing for this demo, but we do have a lot of anatomy lessons as well. And all of the anatomy lessons do have a histology portion. And so there's two options for the histology exercises. Students can either purchase a microscope through us or um, on their own, and we will provide them with the histology slides, or in some instances, we may have the students prepare their own slides to view under the microscope. But if the microscope is not cost-effective for you guys, if, you, if the students, you want, want to keep that price point really low uh, and not include the microscope, which does tend to be a little more expensive, we have our virtual microscope, which Dwayne, I think, may be pulling up right now because he is just so on the ball with this. Um, and the virtual microscope has the exact same slide library that we would send to the students, the same slide names. Um, 
and the students get a step-by-step -step instructions as to how to go through and use the virtual microscope. And they will go through and select the slide that they're instructed to in the protocol and still follow essentially the exact same instructions that they would if they had a physical microscope and the physical slides. And uh, you can see that they can change the different magnifications with the microscope, they can download the slide image, which then they can upload into the photo panel and label just as they would as if they took the photo themselves from the physical microscope. So whether they go with the physical microscope or you go with the virtual microscope, they're really getting a very similar experience. Perfect, thank you, Hannah. Um, and we had another question too, I think um, important to address as well. Um, Francis was asking, do we have virtual labs for all of these experiments as well? We do not right now. So we have some virtual options or like all of the microscope, you know, histology sections, we have a completely virtual option for those. For the dissections, we have a virtual option. Um, but there's some of them that just you know, we want to focus on the hands-on experience for the students because we still think that that is so important that students are really going to learn best if they're performing these experiments with the physical materials themselves. Um, with our uh, ESL and HOL brands, we do have some virtual only kits that don't have any materials that we provide to the students and they're just all digital or pencil and paper uh, experiments. But with the SI lessons, Right now, we're really focusing on getting students the best experience that combines both the hands-on and the virtual learning. Great, thank you, Hannah. Were there any other questions as of now uh, before we begin with Dwayne? No? Okay, I think we got them all answered. All right, super. Thank you, Vanessa, for uh, taking time to address those comments and questions. Uh, so what you're seeing on my screen currently is the instructor dashboard for our cloud-based course delivery platform. So if you want to think of everything that Hannah demonstrated today uh, was student facing and curriculum designed for your students and both hands on and virtual activities uh, designed for your students success. But you know, as an educational uh, company and service provider, we would really be remiss at Science Interactive if we did not uh, take your the instructor's needs into consideration when designing uh, our products and services. So I want to spend just a few minutes with you uh, showing you what we've built just for you uh, to make your teaching more effective and, and you, just your life easier when it comes to instructing the laboratory portion of your science course. So from the dashboard, uh, you can quickly view, A, all of the students enrolled in your laboratory course and their progress to date. Uh, so we'll see some names of our students here. And yes, we have the all-star student class uh, for this demo today. You may recognize uh, some of these celebrities. Uh, but each celebrity has completed uh, a series of lab titles in their assigned course. Uh, as the instructor, uh, your quick view lets you know that if the title appears in green as you roll over these bubbles, you'll see the titles of the labs, uh, the student has completed all of their work and officially submitted it uh, for your evaluation. If the title appears in gray, that means the student is currently working on that lab. Uh, and then lastly, if there's no shading at all inside the lab title bubble, it means the student has not yet started uh, with the activities or the associated content for that lesson. Uh, what else can you see from this dashboard and landing page? Oh, uh, well, you can see per title, let's say you had heaven forbid, 40 students in your class. So it was a little inconvenient to roll over each student's name. 
uh, you could select a particular title and get a quick bar chart of where the students were for that given title. Here we see all five of our students have completed the lesson, so it's shaded to dark blue. Uh, but if we had students at various levels of progress, we would see separate bar charts uh, for each of section of the lesson that the students were working on. And then lastly, again, for each lesson, we can pull up and see a quick time on task chart uh, per section of the lab. So just a quick dashboard. As soon as you log on to the course delivery platform, uh, this is your overview page. Uh, what other tools have we embedded for you? Well, we've let you manage your students. So let's say a student drops your course. Uh, you can delete their access to the lab manual platform on your own. So you do not need to call an administrator. Uh, you do not need to call your contact at Science Interactive. Uh, this is very uh, much built for you to serve your own needs. So if, again, you would like to restrict the student's access because they've dropped your course, you can easily go on and uh, delete them. Also, very importantly, you can check the last time your student logged on to the lab manual platform uh, and engaged with the content and you know participated in some of the hands-on activities. So if you have a student that's maybe a little slow uh, to meet their deadlines for your uh, lesson submissions, you can easily check and see when the last time they actually logged on to their lab manual platform. Uh, very importantly, we give you control over the lessons that are housed on the platform for your students to complete and engage with. Now, from this lesson homepage, the first thing you have an opportunity to do is to leave a personalized message to all the students in your laboratory course. So, you know, maybe at the beginning of the, the teaching term, you could leave them a little welcome message. Uh, just hit save. And this publishes in real time to their online lab manuals, meaning the next time they log on to their lab manual, they will immediately see your message. Uh, what else can you do on here? Uh, well, very importantly, you can change the order of the labs for your course. So when we bundle your course and load it on uh, to your access portal of the cloud, uh, you see the labs just either in alphabetical order or how they're coded internally. Um, we don't arrange them specifically for you because we've given you the option of doing that on your own. Uh, so you simply drag and drop the titles to the order that best meets the flow of your existing course syllabus. Uh, if you would like to turn off a lab for your students, meaning it's no longer visible or available for them for whatever reason, just simply uncheck the box. And then lastly, you can determine if students need to complete the labs sequentially or that they can skip around and can complete portions of labs uh, at any time that they choose. So you really have control over how students engage with the content. So how else can you customize our lessons to best meet the needs of your course? Well, in any given lab, we give you the option to add personalized content to the existing uh, course that we've uploaded on the cloud platform. So how do you do that? Well, let's go to a content page versus this overview page. Uh, so we'll select the content page, and we'll see that once it loads up, it looks pretty much like what Hannah showed in her portion of today's demo, uh, with one exception. You'll see this pulsing blue bar, and this blue bar actually occurs at any break between a text portion of a page and an image section slash question portion of a page. Now, this blue bar is a prompt for you, the instructor, to add additional text 
And it's just a matter of either copying and pasting uh, pre-existing text or uh, adding text as you go. And then saving, as we saw before, and your editions are immediately published for your students. Uh, you can also upload images by simply dragging and dropping an existing P PNG or JPEG file, or you can even upload videos. Uh, so if you have a video, uh, if we're talking about the exploration content here, if you have a video that relates to some concepts that are being introduced into this portion of the lab manual, you can drag and drop that video in an MP4 format, uh, and it will appear for your students, and they can play the video as they're reading the content. Uh, just, just like that, you can also add videos to the instructional procedures in the experimentation section. So if you have filmed uh, a particular procedure in your on-campus lab that you want to share with your online students, uh, again, you can just drag and drop that video file into the procedures and your students can view you or students in your face-to-face -face course actually can completing those laboratory activities in a physical lab. So this is a great way for any content page or any exercise page for you to customize your students' experience when they engage with our lab annual content, again, to really best meet the needs of your existing course. So uh, we have tons of instructors that uh, take advantage of these tools um, and, you know, it greatly, greatly benefits their students to feel like they're reading personalized content uh, designed by their instructor. Uh, we offer a variety of other tools for you and you can see the tabs here, but for time's sake today, I'm just going to touch on a couple of others. A very important one is Gradebook. Um, and, and I'm sure grading is not one of your favorite tasks uh, as an instructor. And uh, we certainly share that concern. Uh, so we have designed and embedded a fully functioning gradebook tool uh, within our online lab manuals. And so I wanted to take a couple minutes to show you some of those features. Now, here we're seeing on the gradebook homepage that same list of students that we viewed on the landing page for the course itself. Uh, and we see one difference, though, and that now there are also blue shaded bubbles with numbers inside of them. Uh, and these are bubbles that all of the grading has been complete on, and it's displaying the grade that that particular student has been assigned. Now, um, how much grading do you need to do per lab? Well, you're only going to need to grade the elements in the experimentation section. Now, you may recall, I hope from Hannah's portion of today's demo, uh, that we have those three sections of every lab. They begin with the exploration. And you may recall in the exploration, there's a series of interactive questions, you know, those drag and drop test your knowledge questions and those multiple choice true false question time questions at the bottom of the pages. All of those elements are auto-graded, requiring no input from you. Uh, so that's the great news. Likewise, the final section of each lab, titled Evaluation, as you recall, was that series of eight or so multiple choice questions that span the breadth of the laboratory. Again, those are auto-graded. Uh, no input from you is required, uh, but you are required to grade should you choose the data tables, the photo uploads uh, from your students, and those open-ended assessments at the end of the exercise pages. Um, so, uh, so we hopefully, to begin with, reduced the grading load on you for your student submissions, uh, but also we've given you the opportunity to customize how 
the student responses are graded as far as importance per question goes. So you can assign a points weight value to each lab independently, and then each question within each laboratory itself. So here, if we look at this digestive system experiment, this particular one has what four test your knowledge questions as an instructor. You can customize the point value of each one of those questions. Remember, these are auto graded. So you're just simply determining the maximum score available for each question. Uh, same thing with those question time questions at the bottom of each exploration content page. Uh, and then same thing with if we fast forward to the, all those competency review evaluation multiple choice questions. Uh, you can also automatically control the maximum point values for any of the data tables and end of exercise questions. But more importantly, you can view each of those questions, and in doing so, you can grade each question um, on your own, and we have built in our answer keys uh, completely integrated within the gradebook to grading tool itself. So here are those open-ended questions at the end of the exercises. Here is what we would consider the ideal student answer. And then when you now go up and click on one of your students' names in the course, uh, their answers will populate beside this. So you can do a side-by-side -side check uh, and then assign a manual uh, point score to that particular question for your student. You also have the opportunity in a live student for live students versus these demo students that we have here to leave a personalized message for your student on that particular question and response. So the student can better understand why they got 75% out of 100 credit for any given answer. So anyway, this is the Gradebook tool. Uh, we do offer uh, LTI integration services that will allow uh, all of your grading efforts using the Gradebook tool to port into your learning management system. Uh, now, speaking of LTI, uh, again, this is available for all of our science interactive content that we house on the cloud. And you, the instructor, can choose what level of integration uh, you want your course to have. Uh, and we can click here and show these credentials. And between you and perhaps your IT department uh, at your particular institution, uh, you can elect to just have a single sign-on experience for your students or a complete integration, meaning that in week three, uh, in your learning management system, you can embed Lab 3 from our lab manual uh, directly into that. So the students only see your learning management system, even though they are using uh, our curriculum and our cloud-based platform. From their perception, uh, it's all in your learning management system. Uh, so anyway, we have dozens and dozens of different types of course hooks per lesson uh, in your online lab manual. And we do have assistance, uh, both self-help documents, uh, and we do have a support staff uh, should you have any questions about integration. The last thing I want to show you very briefly, but it's probably the most exciting thing uh, that we've developed for your use uh, on uh, our SI Cloud platform is the custom lesson authoring uh, option. So not only can you add customization to existing lessons, like I showed you a few moments ago, but we have given you a tool to actually build unique lessons from the ground up to be used by your students. Uh, and uh, that tool, as I mentioned, is called Custom Lesson Authoring. I've started a couple here just from a titling standpoint, uh, but you are given in the Custom Authoring tool uh, 
all of the facilities that we have as internal authors to create engaging content for your students. So for example, here's a landing page. You can go in and put in a time allocation. Uh, you can type in learning objectives for your students, just like you saw in our lab manual. And you can add interactive questions, all of these drag and drop options like Hannah demoed earlier. Uh, you can also then create content for your students on exploration pages by adding a title to each page, uh, entering text. Uh, you can then add images. You can add videos, equations, uh, simulations, uh, link out to external sources. Basically, all of the examples uh, that you're able to view during Hannah's demo for engaging exploration content, you have the same tools now at your disposal to create unique lessons for your students. Uh, the experimentation and evaluation sections are also included. So you can design procedures, uh, again, and all of the same tools that coincide with those procedures, and then build a series of open-ended questions at the end of exercises, just as those that accompany our curriculum that are already housed uh, on the SI Cloud platform. And then lastly, you can create final exams, i.e. the evaluation section for your students uh, by adding as many of those multiple choice or true false auto graded questions that you would like to create uh, to be a final assessment for your students. Now, with this custom lesson authoring tool, uh, you are not required to build a complete lesson like we do. Uh, you could just create a test for your students. You could just create a section of exploration content. You could just create a procedure page. Uh, this truly is open for your use uh, to, 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 to determine what best fits the needs for you and your students. As with any tools that we have on the cloud platform for you, uh, we do have a series of self-help documents and videos uh, to assist you uh, with uh, successfully accomplishing any goals you have uh, when using our online cloud-based uh, course delivery platform. So that concludes my portion of the demo today for instructor tools. Uh, I hope you found it informative. Uh, and even more importantly, uh, I hope you found the preview of our exciting and engaging new Science Interact curriculum that Hannah shared with you uh, very exciting and something that you plan to use uh, for your next online anatomy and physiology course. So at this point in time, I'm going to stop my screen share and I'm going to turn this back over to Vanessa. If she's received any questions about any of the, uh, the functionality of our cloud platform and the tools that are embedded for instructors, I'd be happy to address those in the final minutes of today's webinar. Yes, thank you, Dr. Duane. Um, we have some really great questions um, I'd like you to address so all of our attendees can hear. Um, one is from Paul, and he's it's about customization. So when you customize your course, um, can it only be done on an instructor level, or could this be done on an institution level as well? Uh, that's a great question, Paul. Thank you. You know, we have a couple different uh, access levels, if you will, uh, for instructors and institutions. So perhaps, you know, your institution is one that, that designs a course, certainly an online course, and then a, a group of online, maybe their adjunct faculty members, uh, teach that course, but the curriculum is actually controlled centrally at your institution. Uh, and so then uh, we do have an administrative function available uh, for access, and that person then would have ultimate control of the course and how it's set up. 
uh, and then the instructors uh, would then just be responsible for, say, manual grading of, of, of each of the labs and, and things such as that, but not actually designing and customizing the labs themselves. Thank you, Dr. D. Um, one other great question here, again, uh, has to do with customization of the labs. Can I change wording in any text that is already provided, or are there some areas that are not editable? So uh, now let's talk about editing versus adding, if you will. So what I showed you as far as instructors adding text, videos, and images to existing labs, uh, Technically, you're not editing the lab. Uh, you're, you're adding content to customize what your students see. Um, and, and so our content is not editable uh, in that regard. Um, you know, if, if for any reason you were to find something that, that you really felt like needed to be changed from either a, a conceptual standpoint or, heaven forbid, it was a typo or something like that, you know, please reach out to, to your representative at Science Interactive, and, and we'll get that processed and edited straight away and push that content update to you and your students. Uh, but as, as, as a matter of... Hello? Hello? Oh. Hi, everyone. Hey, Vanessa. Um, sorry, we are experiencing some technical difficulties. Let me see if I can um, sure. reach out to Dr. D. Hey, everyone. So I'm Dr. Caitlin Ronnie Jansey. I'm our Chief Academic Officer here at Science Interactive. So uh, while we're trying to find uh, uh, Jane's connection, um, I'll finish up the answer that he was giving. So in terms of editing the content itself, as was presented by Hannah today, um, we tend to, we don't allow uh, faculty to uh, edit the content directly within cloud that we have authored. And the reason for this is that uh, we do provide liability coverage for our uh, our schools that are using our curriculum. So we don't allow uh, changes to the content to ensure that we can continue to provide that liability coverage because changes to any of the experimentation um, could uh, make that null and void. Um, however, we, like Dwayne mentioned, we do have available the uh, custom lesson authoring feature as well. Um, Vanessa, do, you have, do we have other questions that we can answer? Um, yes, so, well, a lot of them had to do with the editing, which uh, most of those, I believe, we have answered. Um, we did have some questions about when this material will be available. That's a great um, question. For the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this material is available to our clients now for adoption this upcoming spring. Um, and we are happy to, if you are currently using us, um, work with you to identify the best labs that align to your current curriculum. Or if you're new to us, um, we're happy to review your syllabus um, to help you identify the best fit labs for your course. Perfect, thank you, Kate. Um, and there was a good question here too um, about, so we, we can't delete questions as we know they're already um, in the cloud. Can we add any questions to reflect, um, you know, maybe specific course outcomes? 
Yeah, yeah. So that can be done, uh, as Dwayne mentioned, through the custom lesson authoring feature. Uh, so if you have sort of a lab practical exam at the end of the semester, or you're looking to expand out um, uh, the number of questions that students are answering, uh, you can use the custom lesson authoring feature. You don't necessarily have to use uh, the introductory content, or excuse me, the exploration content and the ex experimentation content. You could just use um, the evaluation features to build out um, that assignment at the end of the course. Perfect, thank you. Um, and there was one um, also too, I think it might be important, Kate, um, for LMS and grading. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yes, so let's see here. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let me find this question again. So um, how the students scores on the labs assessment and answers um, to the, okay, to the question. So how are those imported to LMS or can they be imported to LMS? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So we do uh, work to provide um, LMS integration with all of the available learning management systems. We're very familiar with Canvas, Blackboard, D2L, Moodle, uh, Sakai. Um, and we do have a team on staff that is here if you ever run into any um, difficulties uh, integrating into your learning management system, they're available to help you um, integrate our content and make sure that you can successfully get set up. In terms of grading, um, as Duane mentioned, all of the multiple choice uh, questions are, uh, are auto graded, but for the, uh, the short answer questions and the data tables, uh, you'll perform the, date, the grading within cloud and then through the LTI based integration that can be ported into your grade book within the learning management system. Uh, so there's no extra work there for you. Perfect. Thank you, Kate. I believe we have them all answered. Um, if there's anything else, any other questions? All right. Well, unfortunately, um, we do have to stop here since our time has run out. But for those um, whose questions were not answered, a distance, distance learning specialist will be following up with you soon to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in the meantime, keep an eye out for our follow-up email that will include helpful resources and a recording of this webinar for your review, as well as the winner of the $100 Amazon gift card. So a big thanks to all of our panelists today and an even bigger thanks to the instructors like you who continue to educate the scientists of tomorrow, regardless of circumstances today. From everyone here at Science Interactive, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you next time.